Hand me that little box in the compartment, will you, pal? Hold the wheel, will you? How far are you going? L.A. Well, you're really traveling, aren't you? Yeah, but I don't expect to make it for a couple of years at the rate I've been promoting rides. Not much luck, huh? Sure, all bad. Not many people stop for a guy these days. Afraid of a stick-up, maybe. Well, you can't blame him. Where are you coming from? New York. Well, New York. You're in luck this time. I'm going all the way. Right through to Los Angeles. You drive a car? Sure. Whenever you're tired, let me know. I'll holler. I guess at least an hour passed before I noticed those deep scratches in his right hand. They were wicked. Three puffy red lines about a quarter of an inch apart. He must have seen me looking at them because he said, Beauties, aren't they? They're gonna be scars someday. What an animal. Whatever it was, it must have been pretty big and vicious to have done that. Right on both counts, New York. I was tussling with the most dangerous animal in the world, a woman. She must have been Tarzan's mate. Looks like you lost the bout. Certainly wasn't a draw. You know, there ought to be a law against dames with claws. Yeah. I tossed her out of the car in her ear. Was I wrong? Give a lift to a tomato, you expect it to be nice, don't you? Yeah. After all, what kind of a dame some rides? Sunday school teachers? little witch. She must have thought she was riding with some fall guy. And me, who's been booking horses around race tracks since I was 20. And I've known a million dames like her. Two million. Yeah. Stop the car, open the door. Take it on the Arthur Duffy sister, I told her. That's the stuff. As I was done, huh? <laughs> but if you want to see a real scar, brother, get a load of this. Wow. I got that one dueling. Dueling? Yeah, we're just kidding, of course. My dad owned a couple of Franco-Prussian sabers. Kept them on the wall for decorations. Well, one day, another kid and I took them down. The old man wasn't around. Had a duel. He got me in the arm here. Pretty mean cut. Infection set in later. Yeah, I can see that. Now, give me that box again, will you? Yeah. made me lose my head, I guess. I began slashing. Before I knew it, I put the other kid's eye out. That was tough. Well, it was just an accident, of course. Do you know how kids are? I got scared, decided I was gonna run away from home. Old man almost caught me when I was packing my duds. The bloody rag I had wrapped around my wrist hadn't caught his attention. It seemed a bundle for sure. But I beat it when he was phoning for a doctor. I was 15, 16 years ago. I haven't been home since. Pull in there for a bite or something, huh? A bite or something. Brother, was I hungry. I hadn't had anything in my stomach for hours. Yet even with that gnawing in the pit of my belly, I didn't want to be in too big a rush to put on the feed bag. First, I had to make sure this guy knew the score. If I got him down on me, I'd buy a ticket to Hollywood. I'll wait out here for you, mister. Well, if there's the money, don't worry about paying for it. This time it's on me. Well, that's what, sir. Pasco, make nothing of it. You make your first million, maybe you can do the same for me. Come on, New York. I gotta make the West Coast by Wednesday. The horse running at Santa Anita named Pirate Bicycle. It means dough to me if I'm on him. We'll make it all right. He did most of the talking during the half hour we were in the place. I ate. He rambled on about his old man, whom he hadn't heard from since he ran away as a kid. Now he happened to become a bookie. And then all about how he got rooked in Miami. One race, 38 grand. They cleaned out my book. How do you like that? That was tough luck. Yeah, and I'm supposed to be the smart guy. Well, you just wait. I'm going back to Florida next season with all kinds of jack. And you'll watch those stinkers run for cover. You want anything else? No, thanks. I've had plenty. That check there, sister? Oh, just a minute, your change, sir. Keep it, sister. 
Oh, thank you, sir. Call again. I'll be waiting outside for you when you finish work. <laughs> Sharp check, huh? I drove all that night while Haskell slept like a log. After a while, I began to get sleepy myself. I was happy, though. Soon I'd be with Sue again. The long trip was practically over, and there'd be no more hoofing it down the concrete. I began to think of the future, which couldn't have been brighter if I'd embroidered it with neon lights. It was nice to think of Sue shooting to the top. <laughs> it's amazing what a full belly can do to your imagination. Stop and put up the top. Mr. Haskell, I'm going to put up the top. Until then, I'd done things my way. From then on, something else stepped in and shunted me off to a different destination than the one I had picked for myself. But when I pulled open that door... Mr. Haskell, what's the matter? Are you hurt? Are you hurt, Mr. Haskell? Start yourself. I'll listen to it. But I know what you're going to hand me even before you open your mouths. You're going to tell me you don't believe my story of how Haskell died and give me that don't make me laugh expression on your smug faces. I saw at once he was dead. And I was in for it. Who would believe he fell out of the car? Why, if Haskell came too, which of course he couldn't, even he would swear I conked him over the head for his dough. Yes, I was in for it. Instinct told me to run. But then I realized it was hopeless. There were lots of people back down the road who could identify me. That gas station guy and the waitress. I would be in a worse spot then, trying to explain why I beat it. The next possibility was to sit tight and tell the truth when the cops came. But that would be crazy. He'd laugh at the truth. And I'd have my head in a noose. So what else was there to do but hide the body and get away in the car? I couldn't leave the car there with him in the gully. That would be like erecting a tombstone. was to cover him with brush, not to rob him. But then I remembered that even if I only drove the car for a hundred miles or so, I would need money for gas. Besides, it was stupid of me to leave all that money on a dead man. Not only that, I'd have to take his driver's license in case I was stopped for something. I didn't like to think about it, but by that time I'd done just what the police would say I did, even if I didn't. I close. The owner of such an expensive car would never be wearing them. Some cop might put me in on suspicion. Hey, you, this your car? Don't you know better than to leave a car with the wheels halfway in the middle of the road? 
That's the way accidents happen. I, I'm sorry, officer. I was just putting up my top. I, I didn't think. Well, and the next time, think. I'll let you go now, but watch your step in the future. I know that's a lonely stretch, but cars come by here once in a while, and we have plenty of crack-ups. Thanks, officer. a dead man in the gully now, it would be me. As I drove off, it was still raining, and the drops streaked down the windshield like tears. I kept imagining I was being followed, and that I could hear sirens back in the distance. Just how long it took me to cover the 60-odd miles to the California state line, I don't know. I lost all track of time. But the rain had stopped and the sun was up when I pulled up to the inspection station. Hello? Carrying any fruits or vegetables? No. Any livestock or poultry? No. I'd see your registration and driver's license, please. Anything in the baggage compartment? This baggage. Charles Haskell, Jr., age 30, brown eyes, dark hair. Identifying marks, none. Are you Charles Haskell, Jr.? Yes. Well, remember, if you're employed and you stay over 30 days, you take out California plates. All right, officer, but I'll only be in the state a short while. Right, you can go now. <laughs> 